That's hey, right. man, it's great to see you. Thanks for joining us. My God, it's been too long, way too long. Well, it's a pleasure. I love the screen behind you, Rich. Uh, it reminds me of, uh, you know, playing in that beautiful hall. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, just, it just feels a little bit like, well, we're doing the best we can. I mean, this is, I, like all of you, most of the people I encounter in my career have been really talented musicians. And this has got to be one of the most disconcerting times in my lifetime for any professional musician. I mean, this is what you breathe for. This is what you get up in the morning for, is, is, is to share this music with people. What's it been like for you, Benjamin? Well, uh, I've continued to teach, and I've been teaching over Zoom, so uh, uh, which is a, a strange, and I guess about 70% of what teaching in person is, uh, is like. And, uh, but being minus concerts, and as you say, minus audiences, it's very, very well, you still have music, go ahead and uh, this performance. It's very different not to uh, anticipate the next concert and uh, uh, the uh, plans uh, that appreciate it. Um, so uh, I'm trying just for the sake of it, <laughs> which works pretty well. It's pretty fun, actually. Well, I'm playing you, um, you know, Your Wi-Fi is a little bit iffy right now. <laughs> just wanted to know, uh, uh, Benjamin, that your Wi-Fi just sort of went in and out there. So we got about every third word. But I know oh, what he's saying. What he's saying yeah. is about, it's, it's an experience, but it's about 70% of the experience that anyone gets. But as Ben and I know, because we've made so many and concertos and, and concerts together. I mean, it's a communal ex experience. It's not something one does alone. And as I look at that, you know, the picture of the Pacific Symphony standing there on stage, I almost can't go through a day without listening to one of our little clips just to keep in touch with, with those musicians that are so fantastically talented. And Rich, I just want you to know that whenever I started programming my 30th anniversary season, there were two or three things that were a must. Number one, Beethoven had to be on that. Because Beethoven, I think Ben could speak the same, so many musicians could say the same thing. It's part of my DNA. And to start a, such a milestone season without the greatness and, and the absolutely monumental music of Beethoven, the strength, the power, wouldn't have been, wouldn't have been possible. And also the Pacific Chorale. But when it came to Beethoven, the Pacific Chorale, there was one soloist, and that's Ben Pasternak, my dear friend from back in our Boston days, has performed as solos with us probably more than anybody. I don't know, Ben, do you know how many times? I don't. Uh, I tried to figure out how many pieces we've played uh, on stage together. It's getting close to 20. <laughs> so, so how old were you folks when you tuned in? <laughs> Well, it was a while ago when our friendship started, but it's, it's as, as alive today as it ever has been. You know, uh, Benjamin, I want to ask you about, about uh, making lemonade. I mean, for a lot of us uh, in quarantine for four months now, we've compensated as much as we can. I mean, now I know how to make sourdough bread. Great. Everybody else does. But what about repertory? Are you using this time to, to maybe explore composers you haven't had the time to look into before? Is this, is this your season for discovering fill in the blank? Uh, yes. Well, I, mean, I have different projects. One uh, that uh, you always have these ideas, oh, I'd love to do this, and then you don't do it. And there are lots of excuses. And the difference now is there are no excuses. <laughs> 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 you have nothing but time. Uh, so I want to be able to play all 32 Beethoven sonatas. Um, uh, from memory, because I read that that was what uh, the composer Saint-Saëns did, that he went on stage and said, uh, I'm the humble servant of the public. Uh, I'm prepared to play any of the Beethoven sonatas you request. So uh, <laughs> I thought, well, that would be great. Um, I, but there are other things too, not just repertoire, like um, a type of practicing that you do sometimes before recording, which is uh, just to make certain that you don't play any wrong notes. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, very often 
uh, when you don't have a concert to play, uh, you just play for yourself. You do it uh, halfway or part of the way and your brain uh, uh, substitutes the rest. Uh, it's very different to play for people and have that responsibility of playing for the listeners. Uh, so I'm, I've taken it to the other extreme um, and uh, I was remembering uh, things that happened to me as a student. My teacher came over and said, uh, oh, we must strive for the most perfect performance possible. And that was, that was, that was all, it was, that was the threat. You're playing too many wrong notes. <laughs> so uh, I have that in mind. Uh, you're right, I've been looking into some new music. Um, I have some music around that I never learned, but I knew was pretty good uh, from the late 20th century. And I've been uh, working on that. Um, anything you can, uh, I can possibly think of to uh, uh, jazz things up, except for jazz, I guess. <laughs> hey, Ben, I really appreciate you wearing the California cap way over there in Baltimore. You said I, that, that was for you. <laughs> <laughs> spirit. I, I've got to ask about, about this cap to teach over Zoom. I want to tell you why the, I have the cap on. I became used to wearing the cap over Zoom because I could not get a haircut. <laughs> so I was covering my hair for the uh, for all the people I was speaking to. Um, now are you teaching? Uh, I was finally able to get a haircut. Are you teaching students all over the world or some of your students back home in, in Europe or Asia or? Oh, it's phenomenal. Uh, one in Australia, um, so one in China, one in Korea. I spoke to Leon Fleischer, who's over 90. Yeah. And imagine to, you know, this new, essentially the way we teach piano is the same way that uh, Beethoven taught Czerny, his pupil. And now we have something different. Uh, using the uh, uh, web. And I spoke to Leon and he tried it also. So imagine a person uh, uh, all the way over 90 years old who's teaching online for the first time. And what really struck him uh, was that he had one student on who was in Albany, New York, and one student on who was in Indonesia. Uh, that was uh, amazing him. And uh, it is fantastic. So well, it's, it's great to see you, Ben, and it, I'm just so glad that you agreed to play the, the choral fantasy, you know, to open my first, the first concert of the season with the Pacific Symphony. You know, you and I have a long history with that piece as well. And, and you know, it was one of those pieces that came together in the last second Beethoven was improvising. Do you approach that any differently than you do a normal concerto? Yes, yes. Well, the first section, well, the, the duck-billed platypus uh, <laughs> <laughs> of uh, music, uh, and yet it seems to, it is an unusual thing, uh, and yet it seems to work very well. The first section is uh, a written out uh, sort of improvisation. It, I think that's how Beethoven could have improvised uh, in real life. And, uh, there are a lot of clues to that, but uh, one is that the ideas that he uses in the improvisation don't come back uh, in once the piece starts with the uh, orchestra and eventually chorus. It's, he just probably would have played something different the next day. Um, but to play something improvised, uh, it has to have that spirit, that feeling, so it's a little freer. And then, of course, the more, if you play uh, with an orchestra, uh, it's quite strict by comparison to playing by yourself. Uh, so the pianist also has to be sort of uh, platypus in this piece, has to improvise uh, impersonating Beethoven and then play uh, in a powerful soloistic style, but also partly in a very uh, uh, chamber music uh, style uh, uh, fitting with the other instruments and sometimes accompanying solos by the other instruments. Uh, and then playing uh, along with an, a chorus, which is different in itself. Uh, the piece is... We missed part of that bit. Uh, you froze up right at the end. Uh, we, we got as far as hearing it uh, with the fact that you're playing with a chorus. Well, Still frozen. 
Right now he's wearing a California hat, but I know that when Ben plays this particular piece, as he's saying, you have to wear many different hats. One right. as an improviser, one as a, as a chamber musician, one as a soloist, a powerful soloist that can you know, rise above a chorus and then sometimes accompanying that same chorus all the while remaining, you know, kind of sane. And it's, it's one of those pieces that, you know, it's, it's neither fish nor fowl. I don't know about the duckbill platypus. I, I'm not sure I could explain exactly what that is, but it looks like it's going forward and backward at the same time that that particular piece. But all I know is that this whole concert came together in such a small amount of time. You know, they did the fifth and the sixth symphony, the fourth piano concerto, some parts of the C minor mass, a Parfido and Choral Fantasy all in the same program on December 22nd, which was probably pretty cold if I remember Vienna in, the, in, the, in, in that particular time. So I'm sure it was a long, long afternoon and evening for, for the audience. And, and it should be noted, obviously, uh, 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 Benjamin has been lost to us, but it was fine because uh, it was about as long as we, were, we really had time. Although I would have loved to have asked him if he had ever done the Bozzoni which is a concerto for piano oh. and male chorus. No, he hasn't done that, but he has done with me in Paris, the, Indi the Indian fantasy of Buzoni. Ah, okay. Wow. Which is a piece for piano and, and orchestra. Because we've done that, actually we've done that twice together. Buzoni, one of those composers, I think his time hasn't quite come, but I hope to live long enough to see it because he wrote some great stuff. So, Carl, uh, the other part of the program, uh, and by the way, thank you, uh, Benjamin, if you're able to hear us, uh, it sounds like we lost our connection, but thank you so much uh, for your time, Benjamin, for joining us. And we look forward to the Choral Fantasy tonight, starting at seven o'clock on KUSC and online at KUSC.org. That's the broadcast from September, the very first concert of the 2019-2020 season. KUSC is broadcasting the first seven concerts of the season, all that exist of the 1920 season, every Sunday night, starting tonight at seven o'clock, again at KUSC.org and on KUSC 91.5 and the other frequencies of the KUSC family.